It's not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with those forklift batteries, those old, old, old ones. That well, that's why, that's why you're... Say what? What you talking about, Lewis? Still on the old forklift batteries because I... As I said before, I'm not going to repeat myself, but i got to get the new ones over here yet. That's going to be a job. So, And I want to play with these another day or so yet. They'll be my, my backup battery bank. The old forklift batteries will be a backup battery bank. So anyway, um, right now that's what I've got. There, now it's back in the equalize. It flips on and off for some reason. I guess it knows what it's doing. Yeah, I thought so, Troy. I thought so. Let's get the real truth out there, man. Let's get the finances. Who cares? Here's the story, truth, right? Unlike what you're telling. There was two sets of forklift batteries. There was a brand new 12 volt at I think 728 amps or 750 amps. Brand new. Never used by anybody. And then you had a 36 volt forklift battery that was used by somebody and mistreated. As a matter of fact, they did some craziness to it uh, to get it to run longer because it was a blown cell and it was leaking. And I think they used concrete or something like that to patch it. Well, here's what you did. You took the 36 one, which is the old one, and then you took some saw, and I don't remember what you used, and you saw the connections between the cells, where you're supposed to desolder them by using a blowtorch and popping the thing out, and then resoldering it when you're done. That's how you fix those cells, by the way. I mean, I've never done it. I mean, you never need to. Um, but anyhow, <clears throat> you butcher it. <coughs> you gave them some crazy patch wiring deal. <coughs> and you put it up, which is what this clip was talking about. And <coughs> it would do <coughs> a rapid charge, sorry, a fever. It would rapid charge up until it reached a certain point. <coughs> One thing about the fork clip bag is once it rapid charges up, <coughs> It has to trickle charge <coughs> to get up to full voltage. Yeah, I mean, your charge controller was saying 15 something volts, but it needed to be trickle charged. That's the way that battery was originally designed. It's designed to put into a forklift, run it for however many hours, eight, nine hours, and then trickle charge all bloody night. 12 hours normally. And that's the way that battery was designed. So you can't put the blame on the battery, right? Now you're using a charge controller, and if I get it wrong, I'm sorry, but it's like Morningstar, I think, is a charge controller. Now that charge controller was designed to do automotive style batteries, which is 6 volt and 12 volt. It doesn't understand forklift. It doesn't have any of, the, of that battery's properties programmed into it. It's automotive only. So it really wasn't designed to do that. On top of that, you said that you were going to use the old forklift battery in contrast to the new forklift battery as a standby, which you never did. You plugged in the new forklift battery, you said it worked fine, it worked great, everything else. Until somebody put a little bug in your ear telling you to go back to six volt. I know that's what happened. I don't have to think about it. They don't understand forklift batteries. You don't understand forklift batteries. All right. I, for me, a battery is a battery is a battery. It's just a matter of looking at the characteristic of the chart of the battery and as far as the chart rate. But anyhow, regardless of all that, I told you then that you should take and plug up the new forklift battery and put it into an A side of a blue C switch, right? Because you got the power coming in from the power control goes into the blue C switch and the A side would be connected to the new one. Then I told you to take all 12 cells of the old one, which there should have been 12 good cells out of that, maybe a little more, 
and take those 12 cells, put them off on the B, and connect them at, well, since you're stuck with the 12 volt deal, put them in a 12 volt configuration where you have one 12 volt, two 12 volt off the B switch. Now, blue uh, C switch can do an A, a B, an A plus B, and off, right? So you would have one where you can move a switch and you could charge these batteries independently by just flipping the switch, where it goes to A or it goes to B or however you want to do it. That's what you were claiming you were going to do. You never did it. On the opposite side, where you pulling your um, your uh, inverter off of, that would also have a blue C switch, where it would have an A and a B. A side plugs up to the new one, B side plugs up to the old one, which is actually two different groups of 12 in parallel series. That would have gave you adequate supply of power. So theoretically, let's say you're running into a period of time where you wouldn't get enough sun, okay? While you were using one that's sort of charged up, say B, you could charge up A and still have lights on. It charge it up, it run it fine, get up the voltage, which won't be full voltage, but you'll get it up and you can survive. Now you didn't do that, Troy. So you can't say that you were gonna do that and blame it on the O4 clip battery because you never used it. I mean, you used it for a few weeks, you took it off, you laid it to the side, and you never touched it again. I'm willing to bet those batteries are heavily sulfated still. Why don't you put a Bedini on it? Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, the problem with the battery isn't the battery. The problem is with the operator, right? If you had a total of eight panels kicking out, say, 250 watts each, and then you brought that in to two different power controllers because you got two now. You could have ran all, well, we could have ran both of them into one battery, get it charged up. Granted, you're not trickle charging it, but get it charged up to most capacity. Then you could flip it over to the other one, bring it up, and then with whatever sunlight you have left, then you can put it back to, to the other one, whichever one you chose, and let it the sun just charged up normally throughout the day. Now, back to the uh, Morningstar charge controller. It don't know forklift. It's not programmed into it. As I've said, the Morningstar charge controller is a automotive battery charge controller. That's the only charts are programmed into it. The higher end charge controllers which would be Outback, which is what I prefer. Then you've got Midnight Nightmare, which is one I wouldn't buy if you paid me. Uh, or you've got Xantrax, which is actually now known as Snyder Electric, which makes a very good charge controller. And I've seen people put it up, and they're running power into it left and right, and they have no problems, Troy. It's the operator with the wrong equipment. And that's what's called the truth, Troy. Unlike what you told prepper nurse one. And, and your viewers. There's a little thing in the Bible called the Ten Commandments. Right? I'm a Messianic Jew. To me, there's 613 commandments. For you and your occult, there's ten. And one of them says, do not lie. You lied. And I got you. So you need to make a retraction.